So today we are honoring our fathers. Let's give the fathers a hand. Our spiritual fathers and our natural fathers. So today I want to talk about honor, especially honoring the fathers. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long, that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. So that's a, a clause. That's an attachment. That means that if we want things to go well with us, if we want to be blessed in the land, we need to honor our moms and our dads. In the New Testament or the New Covenant in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, that you may live long on the earth. So if we want to live long and strong on the earth, we need to honor our moms. Hi, mom. My mom's here. Mama, shal shalom. Our moms and our dads, we need to honor them. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So honor means to hold in high esteem or with great respect. Honor means to regard or treat someone with admiration and respect, to give someone special recognition. So when we think of our dads, especially when you're a teenager or, or you're a young adult, you don't quite honor or see or respect your dad maybe the way you should, but we need to think back. Think back to the time when you were a little baby. <coughs> And your mom would help, but often your mom would say, like Lucinda, Jared, and I run into Liam's room at one in the morning, bottle feed him, and then change his diapers. So our parents have invested so much into us, even as little babies. Think of all the times they, they taught us how to play a sport, or spoke to us, or took us to a friend's house, and... And, and just blessed us and worked hard to provide for us. So we need to think back and honor them for all that they have given us. Now, when the Bible speaks about honor, it doesn't mean that you must only honor your parents when they're honorable. Because isn't that what human nature says? You nice to me, I'll be nice to you. You nasty to me, I'll be nasty to you. So the Bible is not teaching about that. Honor is a higher dimension of, of admiration. It's honoring them because your heavenly father says to honor them, whether they're honorable or not. So much of the time we need to honor fathers by faith, especially if your father didn't serve the Lord and maybe he was a, a very nasty guy, maybe cruel, maybe treated you badly, maybe never told you I love you or respected you. And, and sometimes those kinds of dads are hard to honor. It's very easy to honor a dad that's always there and loving and kind and generous and uh, doing lots of great things, but maybe your dad wasn't like that. And for that, it's a little bit sad. However, we have a heavenly father that loves us and cherishes us and, and who wants to be there for us. Amen? So I want to give you some tips or some tools that we can use to honor our dads. Number one, speak well of them. I hear so many men, now none of you, I'll be honest, it's actually none of you. So you guys are all off the hook. Maybe it's you that are watching on social media. Just kidding. But so many people speak badly of their parents because a lot of the times their parents were bad. They didn't treat them with honor and respect. But Romans chapter 13 verse 7 says, Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. 
So the Bible warns us to honor our fathers. Now, now, if you think of it, honor doesn't mean like you highly, gratefully respect this person for all the great decisions that they've made in life. Maybe they've made terrible decisions. Maybe they treated your mom badly. Maybe they treated you badly. So it doesn't mean that you, you highly respect them, but you honor them as your father. Exodus 21 verse 15 says, And he who strikes his father or mother shall surely be put to death. He who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his hand, shall be put to death. So human traffickers, watch out. <laughs> and he who curses his father and mother shall surely be put to death. I'm so glad we don't live in the Old Testament. Because how many times are we disrespectful or, 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 or not good kids to our parents? Now, you, you all perfect kids. You've never made, you've never taken your parents' car without permission. You've never stolen a dime from your mother's purse. You've always done your homework. You, you, your mom said, where were you? You always told the truth. So I know you guys are so holy. Maybe it's not really the right message for you. But people, normal people, because you guys are extraordinary, normal people aren't like that. Number two, seek dad's advice. So the Bible says there's safety in the multitude of counsel. So when you seek your dad's advice, it doesn't mean that you're going to do exactly what dad says, but it's good to have dad's point of view. Now, if dad isn't following the Lord and the Lord's principles and the word of God, take dad's advice with a pinch of salt. Listen to what he says, because sometimes even though some people aren't serving the Lord, they have incredible experience and incredible wisdom and make better decisions and choices than sometimes people that serve the Lord. So it's good to get dad's point of view. But what I always do when I get people's point of view, I run it through the, the, the word of God filter. If what someone says is contrary to the word of God, then I shelve it. But if the advice that your dad gives is good advice, take it to heart and consider it. Proverbs 20, verse 29. The glory of young men is their strength, and the splendor of old men is their gray hair. Job 12, 12. I'm laughing because some people say Job. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Wisdom is with the aged men, and with lengths of days, understanding. So there's some people that I know, some of my team members back in South Africa, one man in particular has gone to be with the Lord. He left school, I think, in standard one. That's like grade three. And it was always a regret of his. And the reason why he left is because uh, he punched the teacher in the face. <laughs> and uh, he was too embarrassed to go back to school, so he told me, no, I was too embarrassed and, and I just never went back to school. But he was such a wise man, but because of his decisions, he always had a minimum wage job and he came to work for us and he, he actually stayed in our family, Lawrence, for 50 years. He worked for my grand, then my mom, then he came to work in our ministry. But I always, for so many situations, I went to Lawrence for advice. Because he had street smarts. He was wise in, in, in godly wisdom. Not always godly wisdom, but the Lord used him. So I would always say, like, Lawrence, what do you think? And I would hear what he had to say, and I would take it. And he was like a, like a father to me. Number three, acknowledge your dad in your own achievements. I always love when, you, when we watch... Uh, people win uh, athletics tournaments, boxing, tennis, whatever. I love it when they thank their dad or their mom because they're honoring the fact that my mom or my dad was the one that maybe first believed in me. My mom and my dad was the one that was schlepping me to, to all the practices, schlepping me around the state to all the tournaments, investing financially in me. So we need to... Honor our parents for the investments that they make into our lives. And it doesn't mean you have to win a trophy to thank your parents. 
Thank your parents for teaching you the Bible. Thank your parents for teaching you how to be wise. Thank your parents for teaching you, maybe they taught you how to play the guitar or how to use a computer or how to do certain things. We need to honor our dads, honor our parents for where we are in life. And especially for those that have really done well in life, think back to the one that first believed in you. Maybe your mom or your dad's love language wasn't to say, I love you, I love you, I love you, you're the most incredible child, I love you, I love you. But maybe their lang love language was to provide for you. So we need to look back, especially on Father's Day, so I'm challenging all the kids when the opportunity arises today, thank your dad and your mom, but especially your dad for everything that he's done. You know, we go to a lot of schools in Africa, but a lot of schools, obviously, we've done 129 Orange County school campaigns. And in many of them, especially in Africa, and even here, I say now, guys, think about everything that you get to experience. The fact that you can go to the fridge and open the fridge and there's food, your mom and your dad worked hard for that. Think of the roof over your head. Think of every vacation that you've ever been on have you guys ever thanked your parents? And I can just see the conviction hitting these young kids. Like, Because a lot of kids have an entitlement mentality. Their friends are going to Cabo. Their friends are going here. Their friends are going there. Their friends are going to Europe. And they feel, well, I, I should go as well. So let's make sure that we grateful kids to our dad. Amen? So thank your mama or your dad. And, and also, let's thank our Heavenly Father for everything that we have. Amen? Number three, spend quality time with your dad on a regular basis. So this is how we can show our love and appreciation for our parents. Take him out for coffee. Phone him. Don't forget your dad. Number five, learn your dad's story. So find out about your dad. Like, what was he like as a young boy? Dad, what did you do over here? And dad, what about this? And dad, what about that? And I know my kids are always like, they want to know about me. And, and, and some things I say, no, I can't tell you that. Why, dad? No, because I don't want you to do the same naughty thing that I used to do. So it's good to tell your kids stories about your life, especially if they can add value to your kids. And it's nice to know what dad did. Lawrence used to tell me about my dad. My mom used to tell me about my dad. It's good to know things about your dad, even if they've passed away. Try to get some stories about your dad that you can also pass on to your kids. Number six, bless your parents. So Mark chapter seven speaks about, it says, and he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father and mother will surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things to do. So he was basically rebuking them for being stingy. And when I say bless your parents, if you are in a position financially to bless them, bless them. Or if you may be a young child now, a teenager, in the future, keep in mind everything that your parents went through. So I grew up in Africa and in Africa, uh, the tradition is that the kids will always look after their dads and their moms and their parents. Almost encourage them and, then for, and, and forcing them, don't forget who changed your diapers. Don't forget who put food on your table. So if your mom or dad, when they're elderly, are unable financially to, to, to look after themselves, you need to look after them. You need to be a blessing to them. So ways you can bless your, your, your dad or your mom or your parents is take them out for a meal and you pay the bill, amen? 
Or maybe you can afford uh, to send them on a vacation, send them on a, on a, on a boat cruise, send them overseas, uh, be a blessing to them. I know some, some kids, when they do financially, will bless their parents with a, with a car or bless them with a home, pay off their house. Number six, the next one is forgive them. Many of us, not really me, but many people need to forgive their dads because their dads were not good dads. Maybe your dad left your mom when, when, when you were young. That's happened to so many of my friends. They, they just left when they weren't even a year old. Or maybe your dad was cruel. Maybe your dad was, never told you I love you, I care for you. And maybe you have a little bit of resentment in your heart and you need to forgive your dad. Because they, they were there, but they weren't there. They were there, but they weren't present. They never told you I love you. Maybe they didn't come to your sports games. They didn't encourage you. They, they didn't build you up. Maybe your dad was, was horrible to your mom or whatever the situation is and you've been holding this unforgiveness. We need to forgive our dads, amen? And my final closing is some advice to the dads because I want you dads to be successful in being a dad. I want you to be the best dad on planet earth. Your kid should tell you that you're the best dad, the best person in the world. Oh, I wish I, I just remembered, I saw a clip probably a year ago. It was the most incredible, I actually cried and you would cry as well, I only remembered it now. But in this clip, they have about four or five parents and, and they have four or five kids. Now, they probably like had 100 parents and 100 kids, but they chose, obviously, the best ones to bring this point home. And they said to the parents, if you could have dinner with any person in the world, who would it be? And the parents were like their favorite NFL star or boxer or, or celebrity or singers. And so you heard that first, and then... I was like, I wonder what the kids are going to say, like Donald Duck or Justin Bieber or one of these kind of like, and you know what the four or five kids said? If you could have dinner with any celebrity, any famous person in the world, who would it be? And they all said their mom and dad. So that's how our kids need to look at us, that we are the most incredible kids in the world. So advice to dads, take it or leave it, I hope you take it. Number one. Leave an inheritance to your kids. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So it's not only talking about your kids, it's talking about your grandkids. So I looked up the meaning of inheritance and it said legacy, endowment, estate, heritage, benefaction, and provision. So you can leave an inheritance to them spiritually and physically. So spiritually, what are you putting into your kids? What are you putting into your grandkids? God wants us to speak the word of God to our kids, to speak the word of God to our grandkids, to declare things over them. I'm every day, Cody, Zach, Leah, you are blessed and highly favored. God is with you. You can do all things through Christ. You are blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the field, blessed in the city. When they play tennis, you're going to be the greatest tennis player in the world. When, <laughs> when you do, oh, you're going to be the best. You're amazing. You're incredible. I'm building their self-confidence. I'm building them up in the Lord. I'm teaching them the word of God. And it takes effort. It doesn't always come naturally. Because sometimes even as a pastor, you giving out, giving out, giving out, and the temptation would be, let me give my kids the scraps. And, oh, guys, I'm too tired and blah, blah, blah. But you need to make it a lifestyle in sharing the Word of God. We went to Cody's graduation, uh, was it this week? Last week. And I was so blessed uh, all the kids were there, all the parents were there, 
And his teacher said, in all the years I've been teaching, and this is like 30 years because she's mature in the Lord, probably been teaching 30 years plus. She said, never have I seen a kid that knows the Bible as well as him. In fact, I had to consult the other teachers because four is like a perfect score. I've never given a four for Bible studies in my life, but I gave your son a four. She said it in front of all your parents. While I'm doing the Bible study, Cody jumps in and finishes my, my, my thing. I, 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 I might as well just like, grab my coffee and sit down and let Cody preach to all the kids. <laughs> so where does that come from? That doesn't come naturally. That comes from where, when he's watching TV and wants to watch the Cartoon Network or this on YouTube. And we, no, 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 no. We're going to watch Bible stories about Jesus. We're going to watch uh, uh, the guys going around Jericho. We're going to watch Superbook. We're going to do this. And you cultivate excitement for the Word of God. Lucinda is very good at encouraging the boys to read the Bible. I'm always hearing her, like, Cody, go into our, our, our room and close the door and read the Bible. He's six years old. So you've got to cultivate that. And when you cultivate that, then your kids start talking about the Bible. This morning, the first thing out Zach's word, he was asking me something about the devil. He's four years old. Dad, why do people, why does Satan come into people's hearts? How, do, how, did it, how does it happen? I mean, dude, <laughs> I just woke up, you just woke up, it's like 6.30 in the morning, you're asking me about the devil. So where does that come from? Lucinda and I are pouring in. You don't need money to pour in spiritually to your kids. But it takes time. I want to encourage you to take time. And maybe you missed it as a dad with your kids. God can always redeem it, but sometimes... You can really redeem it with your grandkids, pouring into your grandkids. And then financially, I want to encourage you uh, to think about blessing your kids. To, to, to think about setting something up for your kids to bless them. Amen? And your grandkids. Imagine what a great gift. Uh, at Cody's old school, the one dad said that his wife, who he married, the father was really wealthy, and he put money into a, into a trust, and all the kids and grandkids for future generations can go to a private school for free because of that decision. So there are many ways you can be a blessing, and you may say, well, i got no kids. Well, you can still do it, and, and, and we can bless kids in the, in the children's church. Amen? Number two, training your children up in the Lord. We spoke about it now. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So even driving to church today, like everyone in our car took a turn, and then I think my, my mom prayed, and then and she said, Amen, and Cody said, you, you must say in Jesus' name. And then Zach prayed, he said, Amen. Cody said, you must say in Jesus' name. So, <laughs> Pastor Cody. So, so we need to train up our kids like that to be, to be uh, following the Lord. Number three, encourage and help them in their God-given assignment. So everyone has a God-given assignment. Some are called to ministry. Some are called to business. Some are called to sales, to politics, to IT, to a million different things, education. When you, you, you see what your child is called to do, encourage them to go for it. Encourage them to do courses. Encourage them to, to progress with their intellect. Encourage them to, to study the Bible. And when you see a gift in, like Cody's seriously gifted at tennis. I, I'm coaching him three days a week because I see of all the kids I taught, He's the most gifted, so I'm pouring into him. And uh, after a long day, it's like my flesh is like, oh, he can miss one day. And then I'm like, no, I made a commitment, uh, not to him. He would love me to miss a day. <laughs> but, but I've made a decision because I see a gift in him, so I'm encouraging him, I'm pushing him. I see a gift 
in, in, in his knowledge of the word of God, uh, and that's where our, our, our children's ministry is so good. While we're here, they, they, one of the things they do, they teach them uh, Bible knowledge. They do Bible quiz. They teach them the word of God. So whatever gift in your kid has, it might be a creative gift. It might be an organizational gift. It may be an intellectual gift. Maybe they're good at whatever they're good at. See that gift and speak life into them. Maybe they're good at painting. Encourage them in that. Maybe they're good at songwriting, but three of their songs weren't so good. Well, don't worry about those three songs. Keep writing. Keep writing. God's going to give you songs. God's going to give you songs. Jeremiah 1 verses... For then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. That means set apart. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And I said, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. I'm a youth. And the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go to all that I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. So encourage your kids, man. Encourage your, your kids, moms, in the Lord to do all that they call to do. Amen. Can everyone just close their eyes?